All right, traders, welcome to Swing Scans here for August 23rd, 2014. This is Ken Calhoun coming at you live here for another episode. As always, all information is for educational use only, not making advice about what to buy, sell, or hold. By watching this, you agree not to make actual trades based on this information. Uh, for those of you who are new, let me go ahead and start the webcam so you can see. So you can see me. And also, uh, hey, welcome everybody. Uh, you can resize that either up or down uh, as you wish as well in your own interface from what I understand. So anyways, our swing trades, we like to cover instruments usually between 20 and 70 is a general rule of thumb uh, per share. Minimum 10% ranges on 15-day charts and at least a million shares a day average volume. Let's take a look at our charts. Last week, we had quite a few good plays. Where is... Here is the uh, members area. All these in green worked out well. They moved up nicely. You may also want to keep those. All of those in green are worth keeping on the radar for the next week ahead as well because there's still uptrend continuation charts. So in addition to all the new ones we've got for you this week. Let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at HFC, uh, the ticker. Let me open up the chart here so it's easier to see. Uh, HFC's gone from 45 up to 51, so it's got a six-point or five-point run. A uh, really nice move in this one. I like this one because it's got a very strong multi-week uh, uptrend, as opposed to some of the others just have a recent uptrend. This one has a very strong sustained uptrend. So HFC is worth keeping on the watch list. My entry trigger uh, 51.8 for that. So keep an eye on HFC. Uh, it's got a nice wide-range continuation play. Uh, yesterday's markets also reasonably strong, a nice jump start. So we'll see if that takes out new highs in the upcoming week ahead as well. Twitter, also worth keeping on the watch list. It's been quiet for quite some time, but it's finally starting to come back to life. I like the fact that it has a wide range candle at the right side of an ascending triangle pattern, right? That's a good momentum play. You've got an ascending triangle on the daily, and then you see it, the story of buying and selling is the buyers in charge took it up to new highs. We'll see if it continues on up and take an initial shot at it. I've got 46.60 is a long trigger. The scale in trigger would be up at two points above that, up at 48.60. Okay, so always have primary and secondary entries on these type of charts. Usually two points above the first entry is kind of a good default to start testing out for uh, scaling in or position sizing. So Twitter uh, break out from its congestion box yesterday. So that's what put on my radar for this uh, week. Another one, Rackspace, uh, R-A-X, the ticker, especially good on the gap continuation from Tuesday. You can see it gapped up, it pulled back just a bit, and ultimately continued on up. Very strong move up yesterday. Remember, one of the patterns that I want you to look for is this engulfing pattern where, and I mentioned it time and time again, where you've got a price that, first thing, step number one is, Look for this type of pattern where during the last 30 minutes of yesterday, the day before session, price starts from beneath it and traverses or eclipses that entire price. That tells you buyers are firmly overtaking the sellers that were in the congestion box earlier, as you can see here, right? There's sellers in this congestion region here, and a gap down on sympathy with that, but then buyers came in heavily and lifted it on up to new highs. Found support above previous day's high. And we're off to the races. So keep an eye on that one to see if it takes out new highs over that 34.8, the specific long trigger. Whenever I'm looking over to my left, I'm just looking over at this. I don't want to clutter up the screen with that. It is up at 35.30. So that's hopefully safely out of reach of any false breakout or chop. But it's such a nice two-week uptrend in RAX. This may be worth keeping it on the watch list for the, the weekend as well. The next one I have for you is URBN. Again, these are my very best swing trading triggers. Oh, no, thanks, Carl, saying a great seminar the other night. I appreciate it. Hey, good morning, Don and Bauer. Yeah, good to see you all, too. I have minor gap up continuation on the 19th, back on Tuesday. And so it has a 45-degree angle breakout, right? It had all this congestion and chop. It started kind of a jump start with a minor gap that ran up a couple of points. We'll see if it breaks over 40 in the week ahead as well. But URBN, Urban Outfitters, I believe is the company name. But URBN, uh, nice. That's a good good jump start 
Anytime you see, by the way, an instrument that moves out of a previous trading range, and again, you, you guys should all read that book, How I Made Two Million in the Stock Market by Nicholas Darvis, talking about basically how to how he made a, a bundle back before this is fifty years ago or something, back with faxing and all that, or back before the internet days on the phone and fax by trading things that moved outside of previous box trading ranges or congestion boxes. That's a very good breakout continuation strategy. And it makes sense just in the, today as it did back in the old days. Uh, always look for things that have escaped the previous chatter or buy and sell battle between buyers and sellers and moves into an entirely new trading range. And you can use the average trading range here, 35 to 37. So that's a two-point range, 37 to 39.4 is a secondary range, right? This is how you use price projection. I was teaching this in my Vegas seminar. You've got a breakout continuation, minor gap here or minor trading range here. It then flipped into the same exact points of trading range during last week and Fridays even pierced into the third set of trading range, kind of like Neapolitan ice cream. You've got chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, or whatnot. We're in a new, tr or the flag of Mexico, whatever. you got a new band up here to play with. So we're going to see if this takes out new highs as well. Always good to do these price mapping projections, at least mentally or visually, to help you develop your skills as a price action breakout continuation trader in our current market. So you are being good. Southwest Airlines has been a rock star among all the strong airline stocks we've had. United American and Delta, as well as Alaska Airlines, for that matter, and the hospitality industry, too, for that matter. Hertz had been strong up, so airliners, cars, wouldn't surprise me. It, I haven't looked up the, yeah, hot for hotel for Starwood is also strong, by the way. It's not on the official watch list, but all things travel-related, airliners, cars, rental cars, and hotels are all up nicely. I like Southwest's chart because it's got a nice, clean and like a line that's straight, pulled straight from 27 to 32. So it's got a nice five-point range in it, right? We have the cup or consolidation box, the obligatory handle, and then we get a minor gap that continued on up to new breakouts, another minor gap that continued on up, yet another minor gap that continued on up. Do we see a story here? Always look for sequential multiple gaps. I mentioned this in an earlier session, and it's particularly valuable because what you're looking for is a preponderance of buying pressure, as evidenced by they're so excited about it before the market opens, they buy it up uh, outside a market up to new highs. And that's why they bid it up there. You can see minor gaps that continue, minor gap that continued. So see if this story continues its uh, similar approach in the upcoming week ahead if we have another minor gap that continues. Now, southwest, my trigger point is 32.7, okay, and that's fine, preferably right after a minor gap because those are the strongest entries. I teach that in my online, my live room and how to trade gaps training and the rest of it, but, you know, I'll just give you guys good examples here. Minor gaps continue in this chart every single time in trend, right? Minor gap continued up, minor gap up, Gap up, gap up. That's not quite a gap, but moved up. We'll see if we get another minor gap up in Southwest. Now, a sector-based trading approach, and I teach how to do this in my courses. And one of the things you want to look at is, say, if Southwest is up, United Airlines is also up. American Airlines is they also up. Delta Airlines also up nicely. Delta is actually really good. Delta and Southwest are the two best airline stocks. You might want to keep both of those on the radar. Uh, but LUV is better of the two. Uh, I've got Delta as one of my picks coming up in a minute after Macy's. Uh, but those are a sector-based. That's why I added Delta as well. You can also look at United and, Con or United and American Airlines. Continental merged with United a few years back. Uh, but look at the uh, uptrend continuation for similar instruments that are in the same sector because rotational money flow or institutional money flow is segmented as we should trade too amidst similar instruments in the same sector on strength. So you're not betting it all on one instrument, but you're dividing your capital allocation into multiple entries across instruments in the same strong sector at new highs. So that makes sense. That's a good process. Next up though, let's take a look at Macy's. Okay, this had a gap down continuation and then all these micro gap up 
breakout continuation plays, right? And that just pops out to me. See how we had a big gap down the recovery, though? We had a minor gap that ran, minor gap that ran up, minor gap that ran up yesterday, right? Another minor gap that kept on going up at, to 62.10 in Macy's. So I like the fact that this has a good 45-degree angle breakout, and we have minor gaps telling us that buyers are firmly in charge, or as my colleague Steve Nissen would call those windows, we have minor gap continuation plays uh, in Macy's. So keep an eye on that. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can also, you know, you could look at, say, Sears Holding or Target or Walmart or some of the other retailers, JCPenney. This other one is Kohl's, I think. But I, I don't like those. I, I like Macy's is the best of the retailers, right? That has the best chart pattern. So although the others are out there and slowly drifting up, this one is the rock star of the group, right? Macy's is stronger than the other uh, department store stock. So you can see it's done really well. And it's gone from 56 to 61. So we've got a five-point run in Macy's for good continuation breakouts. So you may want to keep an eye on that one. My long trigger is 628. Okay, now back to our airlines. Remember I told you about Southwest. Delta is the other standout stock of that sector. You can see minor gaps that continue. And in this one, we even have kind of an inverse head and shoulders pattern. It looks like a small bullish cup, a larger bullish cup, then a smaller right shoulder, another bullish cup, and then it takes off to new highs. So triple cup, small cup, even two small cups, a large cup, and then another small cup there. Actually, the technical neckline would be right there if you were to draw that. Anyway, a bullish pattern that, after its congestion box, ultimately did take out new highs. Uh, we're standing on the sidelines now. We want to see if it breaks over 41, and I've got 41.30 as the long trigger in Delta. Does everybody understand that, the benefit? You know, for example, I mean, let's say you trade LUV and you get in long, but then that one does a pullback right after you get in and you take a stop. Well, if you're just trading this only airline stock, that would be end of story, right? But instead, let's say you're trading both this one and Delta, and although you took a minor stop in Southwest, the Delta one is the one that actually kept going on up and escaped being stopped out of because the buying in that one was stronger than uh, LUV. Maybe they rotated money, and so that chart became even better than Delta, uh, or I'm sorry, Delta became even better than LUV. So by hedging your bet, by playing a couple of strong instruments in the same sector, oftentimes you'll find, too, it's just a matter of fortune or chance or whatever. Uh, even with the best developed trading entries, uh, the best laid plans of mice and men, uh, they run afoul of the market makers or specialists or high-frequency traders. You want to hedge your bets by having a couple of different plays on in two different instruments, at least two. Don't get exotic and detailed. I used to do that back in the 90s. That kind of suffers under its own weight. It's too much of a hassle. So don't be out there trading all six airline stocks or whatever like that. Just two, maybe three. Uh, but take, you know, instead of 100% of capital, let's say, you know, 500 shares in one, you might do 50 or 100 shares in several instruments. And that way you can start to nurse those trades along and babysit them. And which, whichever ones work out the best or the, the one, maybe there's one out of three that really shoots on up and keeps going. The other two kind of drift and chop and one stops you out and the other kind of break even, it's not moving much, but there's the third one that you otherwise wouldn't have traded that you are now trading that makes it up, makes up for it, and then you get into a position scale or size into the trade, and then you're in the money on all three of those in aggregate as a team, okay? So that's a good quick sector, and that applies to everything I teach you. You can always look for related sector instruments to see which ones are moving in sympathy with the others. Okay, let's move on, ARMH, so apply that. ARMH. We've got a couple of minor gaps. Look like they're all ultimately continuing on up. What I like about this is after its initial breakout range, this is kind of an inverse acceleration ramp, a sharp angle that then became steady, but then it did a big gap up and kept going on up. So now it's getting a second wind or getting second price action volatility on a continuation. So I like the fact that ARMH is continuing on up. Obvious price action, immediate resistance is 47.50. Trading resistance, I'm using 47.80. So just out of reach of the current trading range for a swing trade continuation in ARM Holdings, A-R-M-H, uh, the ticker for that. So good chart. 
S E E C C see it run trade can trade see can trade look at double bullish cut breakouts on parade and we continue on up to new highs with the rock star chart we got a nice wide range candle that kind of pops out right nice wide range intraday uh, 15 minute candle in this anyway we want to you know kind of wake me if it gets over new highs uh, trigger point is 3680 and playing that a little more aggressively because of the wide range candle we had yesterday right meaning we had a nice big sequence of price action spikes in this so it's nudging on up to new highs so keep an eye on SEE that's a really good chart right that's nice this is an acceleration ramp chart it's a term that I coined years ago in my breakout mastery training and it's a good one it's very valid very validly that's not a word with a great deal of validity it currently it captures the thought process of a narrow range price action move that then has a sharper like a hockey stick breakout this kept running on up right even after this initial moved up here moved up there got new buyers above resistance resistance became new support and it's off to the races so we'll see if C S E E continues on up to new highs as well that's a good chart are you all starting to see the difference between say these charts and all the other charts out there in the market these are uniquely positioned or uniquely identified as being some of the very strongest continuous charts. They're not wild and wacky penny stock charts that are way up and way back down again and you get killed on the razor's edge trying to trade that stuff. Neither are they overpriced Amazon, Apple, Google, Tesla, Priceline, whatever, up over $100, $200 a share. And you have to take five or ten point stops. That's pretty stupid. Instead, you want to focus on these type of charts that go from 30 to 36 with good leverage and high volume, a sustainable, decent, well-defined trend that doesn't have wild and wacky pullbacks or unpredictable gaps all over the map. It has instead a series of minor gaps that keep attracting new buyers at each new high. Remember, your goal isn't to find stuff that's going up. Anyone can do that. Your goal is, as what I teach you guys here, is to find things that not only do they go up, but after they go up, they continue going up. That's kind of the trick, right? So uh, you don't want to buy an exhausted move. Canadian Solar has been the best of the solar instruments, and I've been making calls for this in my live room regularly because it's done so well for us. We had a minor gap up a week before last on the 13th, starting to consolidate. So we're going to gap up, a nice momentum run, then kind of whittling sideways here. I want to see if it flips into a next kind of Darvis box or a new trading range up at new highs, and my trigger point is 3680. I'm being, or 3620 I should say. It's, I'm being a little conservative on this. I'm not using 3580 because of the previous congestion. Notice please too how this is in marked contrast to the earlier one. Uh, for example, ARMH, I have a 4780 long trigger in that. That's a more aggressive long trigger. It's closer down to the current range because the current range is still uptrending. And that's what you do. You play it tight when things are right and moving strongly you play it more aggressively to the current trading range so you can capture and move on a breakout on the other hand instruments that had been in a strong breakout but are now kind of winding sideways still going up okay still in an uptrend but with, with much less slope of line or price action breakout continuation it's got a slower line you move your trigger up as a safety buffer as a kind of a strategic countermeasure to avoid getting stopped out on something that just might random noise move up and then pull back into that slow grinding range. So you stay clear of that and instead rotate your entry trigger up a bit higher. So that's why I've got CSIQ's trigger set at 36.2. Now start to understand the thinking behind that because that's how you actually really trade. That's how I'm a, one of the world's top or the world's top, if I do say so myself, a professional breakout momentum educator and trader in this industry. And you have to, you know, it's not rocket science. I'm not sitting here painting squiggly lines all over the place like, gee, I need a magic MACD stochastic RSI crossover to tell me how to trade. You don't need that. You need a good intelligence. You need, it's like a military ops. You're looking at recon and getting intelligence to, to take action and troop deployments. In your trading, you're looking at doing recon on the chart and figuring out a game, a battle plan, if you will, of exactly where to deploy resources and where to take up offensive positions, where to be defensive play it differentially based on the relative underlying strength, volume, price action, candles, what's going on in these charts. It's a very good, very effective, but 
uh, does take a little bit of thinking. Uh, you don't abdicate your thinking to derivative technical indicators. You instead focus on a carefully developed uh, strategic thought process using the strongest breakout charts, number one, the most likely ones to keep going, but combine that with your own understanding and what you're looking at and what you see in terms of price action, volume breakouts, volatility, sustained length of trend without suspiciously deep pullbacks and other misbehaving shenanigans and the rest of it. So make sure that you're looking for those type of uh, charts as opposed to others. Okay, for our bonus picks, a couple of sub-20s in the house here, I've got for you NRF. Don't believe this one. This one may have been from last week. No, it wasn't. So this is this one's new. Uh, NRF. The reason I picked this one for you was because it's an ascending triangle. Whenever you're looking at cheap instruments, one of the by cheap I mean under 20 bucks a share, which are usually much more dangerous and much less likely to to work out. But if you do insist on those, look for those that have the most consistent story of buying pressure in them and not wild all over the map choppy which most of them are which is why I don't like trading the cheap instruments because because they're cheap it's kind of a battlefield between buyers and sellers and it's much more gambling and risky and tougher to trade cheaper instruments what I found is that once they escape their cheapness and buyers are firmly in charge up at 30 40 bucks a share they're much more likely to keep going up which is why most of these are in that price range right 30 to 50 30 to 70 a share because those are the best uptrend continuations. While things are still in the formative phase or cheap stock, they're not sure what they want to do with it phase, under 20 bucks a share, it's another thinking reason why you want to stay clear of those. They're much more su suspect or subject to pullbacks or sell-offs or quick profit taking because, hey, I bought it at 6 and now it's 15 and I want to take the profit. And if you bought it 14 or something, you'd be in trouble for a swing trade. So anyway, to this chart, you have an ascending triangle pattern in this. So my point is that you're looking for a sustained story of buyers in the cheaper instruments as opposed to all the choppiness that you normally see in those. This one does have a sustained somewhat story of ascending. Buyers continue to stay in charge with a nice ascending triangle at a horizontal resistance at 1855 or so. The trigger point I'm using is 1880. So we want to see if we can play that between 1880 and 20. In the weekend. The other one here is VSH. That's got a better uptrend for $15, $16 stock. Yeah, not my favorites because the trade potential might only be, say, two points. And I don't want to do a lot of work for just two points for a swing trade. I'd rather see three and a half, five, six points on a swing on a $40, $50 instrument than two points on a $20 instrument. Still 10%, but I prefer multiple points so I can play it more carefully with more granularity in my entries. But anyway, uh, VSH is in Victor Sierra Hotel. You can see a nice uptrend out of its kind of almost a head, inverse head and shoulders here breakout that continued on up. A minor gap attracted new buyers. We got a nice price action breakout yesterday. We'll keep an eye on this one and see if VSH is able to get over 16.4 in the upcoming week ahead as well. Our two ETFs to pick are TNA. You could see another minor gap continuation. Kind of choppy uptrend, not nearly the strength that we see in something like, say, the HFC, right? That's off to the races, a nice strong one. But we do have at least a somewhat choppy but still ascending pattern in this one. So this may be good for more TNA. The ticker, 7580, the long trigger, and XIV, another way to play uh, the long ETFs uh, in this one. You can see minor gap continued, minor gap in this case continued, but it gave it back, but ultimately continued. Minor gap continued on up. Keep an eye on this one to see if we take out 45, 4530, the long trigger in XIV. Okay, now we've got a few minutes left. Let me take a look at our candlestick charts for the 90 days and see which of these are best. The main thing you want to look for is a big wide range candle at the right side of a 90 day chart pattern. That's really easy to spot, right? By wide range, it has to be at least one and a half times the height to the previous candle or two. And you can see this is a story of new buyers on high volume. So that's good. This one's a good strong chart. 
I'd go a heavier size than this because we have a wide range candle in an uptrend at the right side of a 90 day chart. Very simple, right? You can test it out for yourself. You say, oh yeah, the guy's right. Most of the time he's right. Twitter, on the other hand, we do have this engulfing pattern and we do have a wide range candle. I would still do light size until we break out over the 48 later. Okay. Uh, we do have, so that would be a light size because we're not in a 90 day uptrend. We do have a gap up. It did a classic Calhoun 50% retrace, right? It gapped up, pulled back down to 50%, which is the previous high. Very obvious once you know how to connect the dots, right? Uh, we want to see if it recovers that. Not my favorite place to play, but because we have a wide range candle yesterday, I thought it might be worth putting on the table for possible attention from institutional traders to the long side coming up in the week ahead as well. Rack space, we are at a 50 moving average or 200 moving average line here. Uh, it did recover. This is a light, so this, I would do light size on that. See the difference? HFC stronger than rack space. Even though rack space looks great on a 15 day chart, right? Nice strong uptrend. On the daily chart, we can see it's just a recovery play off of lows. So by definition, any pivot plays, you start off with lighter share size, right? 90 day highs, we buy on heavy size. Lighter share size though on these recovery pivots. Urban Outfitters, that's a good strong pattern, right? That's got a relatively wide range candle at the right side. It's at least one and a half to twice the whole real body height of the previous candle, at least, although not both, uh, still strong. That's a good strong pattern because we have a gap up. It's a nice 90 day continuation. Wide range candle merits more closer attention for a long breakout continuation in URBN. Southwest, also good. We, although we don't have a wide range candle, because of the strength of the trend here, I would still go heavy size. And for those of you new to working with me, the reason I go through the 90 day is to help from a position sizing standpoint, would you go heavy size, maybe 100, I mean, again, it's all really, really light. 100 shares, paper trading is heavy size, maybe 20 to 50 shares is light size, kind of pilot trades on less certain patterns. We go heavier size on larger patterns. More experience you get maybe doing 500, 1,000 shares on the heavy size and 100, 200 shares on the light size. That's why what I do. But if you want to start off uh, trades, that's what I used to do. Now I like to do everything really light uh, as compared to my earlier days in trading because I found that that's a more effective way to keep smaller stops when you're wrong and then you can position size and scale into the strong ones when you're right. So anyway, this is a good strong breakout, reasonably wide range on LUV. Macy's, because of this, I would do a light size because of all this chop. Even though ultimately it did do an engulfment pattern and we're up at a 90 day high and the candle is reasonably wide, we don't have a nice 90 day uptrend continuation like that HFC. So if you just kind of click back and forth, you can see Macy's not as strong underpinnings as HFC, which has a stronger sustained uptrend. Moving on, we have Delta. This would be light share size because it was selling off for several months. So that kind of automatic trade that lighter. It is doing a recovery and it's been strong the last couple of weeks, which is nice to see, but because of its checkered history in the back, back end back here, all the selling pressure, we want to trade this on lighter size. By the way, how many of you are doing some kind of position sizing or scaling? I would strongly urge you to do that sooner rather than later. That's one of the biggest transformational improvements I made in my own trading many years ago. But my first maybe five or six, five or eight years, it was all or nothing, uh, just trading aggressively, but all or nothing trades. I did not add to winning trades or subtract off of winning trades when they start to exhaust. It was just either all in or all out, and then all in or all out for discrete decisions, which is okay, but it's better if you, instead of all in, splinter that into say two trades to cut the capital allocation in half and do a lot of test trades or small size pilot trades and the ones that do start to work out then you can add you know scaling in with the house's money so to speak to, to play it more carefully so good to hear all right you can see ARMH is continuing on up here uh, this would be lighter size because it had all the selling pressure Despite the fact we have a gap up continuation and it did pierce the 200 moving average because we have anything less than a strong uptrend like HFC or URBN, those are two good strong charts. Ones like this ARMH, although strong lately, you know, 
That's why it helps to have multiple time frames. On the 15-day, it looks great, rock star chart. But if you take a step back and look on the 90-day chart, you can see nah, it has a scattered history back there, which is less likely to inspire confidence and buying activity up here on the right side from new traders because they see, hey, it used to be down here, it used to sell down. On the other hand, you know, instruments like this, I'm sorry, like this, the Urban Outfitters, out of the base, it's continued on up for a whole month without any abatement and selling pressure. Or HFC, the same thing, a whole month of, I'm sorry, buying pressure. And HFC, the same thing. So I'm going to be careful with those. Uh, SEE, uh, this one I would do a larger size on because it does have a nice month-long uptrend continuation and a wide-range candle at the upper right side of the 90-day chart. Right? The previous two candles relatively flat. The most recent one relatively wide, so that was a good strong play. CSIQ, I'd also do light size because of all these non-committal candles up here. We had a nice big open range break, and it kept running on up for a while, so it's on our radar for continuation plays. But because lately, the last week, especially the narrower candles, the story is buyers are getting exhausted. So we want to trade at new highs, but on lighter share size than we otherwise would if the candles were still up at, say, this height or this height up here. So trying to help you become actually genuinely better traders by teaching you the thought process in addition to just alerts. A very professional, in-depth training I'm giving you here. So if we're doing a swing trading live seminar in Vegas, this is the type of thing you'd be uh, learning from me for 1500 or 2000 So you're getting a bargain here. Anyway, uh, we all know that. Anyway, NRF, you can see a, a shooting, almost a shooting star. We don't have 10% or less shadow, so not technically a shooting star, but similar to shooting star pattern, another bearish upper shadow. So I do lighter size on new highs in this one because of all these flat candles. It is a good momentum play, but play lighter. VSH, also light size because of all the sell pressure. I mean, yes, it's doing a triangle and doing a recovery, but we have a shooting star here yesterday, a big bearish upper shadow, and it had so much selling earlier uh, we can go for new longs, what I have, 16.4 is my long call, but we do so in lighter size. And to wrap up, uh, TNA, light size because it's kind of a recovery with sh uh, shorter shadows, and XIV, same story, light size. So, you know, look for the patterns that have the best emergent strength and the widest range candles and make those the foundation for what you learn how to trade. Charts like this are great, right? Uh, and uh, make a kind of a carefully thought out trading plan where you have both light and a mix, a blend of both light and heavy size as a function of both the 15 and the 90 day chart. It shouldn't take more than an hour or so to develop a weekly trading plan that can help guide you for the upcoming week ahead as well. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see a question from Don about, uh, see, why don't I have some stocks that are just about ready to break out at the first initial breakout of the 15 day? A uh, reason is, oh, thanks, Kathy, appreciate it. Uh, reason is, if you try and do consolidation breakouts, at least what I found in my own trading, is that you get a much higher incident rate of stop outs. If you're looking for something that's, say, my charts are so good, I'm trying to find something. Hey, that was good. WY, keep that on the radar for the weekend as well. WY, that's a really good one as well. Uh, anyway. I understand the question. What I don't like, though, is trading, say, something that's been in a downtrend and starting to bounce or been sideways. The reason is, just like with people, you want to hire people that have a background of integrity and sustained strength and pressure behind them because uh, you're not, if you buy the first sign of a breakout, usually that'll do a fake out and pull back down into its range a big percentage of the time, a higher percentage of the time. It's all about trading odds. Remember, it's always been an odds maker as a trader. So you want to buy things that are in a very strong, not a straight up, not a choppy, but a kind of in the middle, 40 to 45 degree angle breakout on a continuation because that's the type of charts that's most likely to attract new buyers after you get in. So yeah, I do more a consolidation range breakouts with intraday trades, but for swing trades, it's better to have a history of strong buying behind kind of the wind beneath the wings of the trade, if you will, uh, to help ensure that it's a most likely to attract additional buyers after you get in. So consolidation breakouts, not good for swing trades. Always better. I've done thousands of trades. I know it's much better to do continuation and continuous uptrends and narrow the field of focus to those handful that have that best type of chart pattern like this because those are the ones that are most likely to attract 
new buyers. So good stuff. All right. Well, I guess that's it for today. Let me know if any questions. If not, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, this should keep you busy for the week ahead. So, for example, Twitter is an example of one that just did a consolidation breakout. That's much less good of a candidate than, say, HFC or Rackspace or Urban Outfitters, which all have a nice at least a week's worth of buyers or Southwest with two weeks of buyers beneath the trade is much stronger than, say, a Twitter type trade where although yeah it's up in new highs it was consolidating all this time kind of a almost a pennant pattern right that then finally broke out those are much weaker on balance than simply trading strong continuous uptrends so and at least that's what I found in my own trade so I hope that helps all right thanks everybody appreciate it and uh, y'all have a good weekend too take care bye bye